Hi guys, here's a quick recap of what we did in, in class today. Um, first of all, let me go back to... Uh, right, so in class we uh, talked a lot about the uh, printf and formatting, and uh, I put a link in the quiz to the man page for printf, which describes things. I also sent an email earlier this morning you should have gotten that gives you some more tutorials and things on printf. But one of the questions that came up in, in class yesterday was uh, if you have a format like 9.2f, what good is the 9? And the answer is, well, that tells you how much space the whole number is going to take up in the, act, in the final output. So what I did was I printed a, a guide at the top that tells us which column everything is printed in. And then uh, if you look down here, floats with a space comes before this format character. So floats with a space. That gets us out to, out to the 7. So let's look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this first float that gets printed takes up exactly 9 spaces. And that's what the 9 is for. The point 2 means that it's got two digits past the uh, decimal place. So if I made this 2, 3, uh, let's go ahead and 5, 6, 7, right? So that it's a, got a little more precision. Um, and I rerun it, it's going to be 2.36. Notice it rounds the number to the whatever the last displayed digit is, even though the internal representation has more precision because the uh, format specifier has 2 here. It only prints two digits. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, okay, what I want to do is pop back. Let's look at the uh, idea of function pointers. So the notion is that uh, here's an example of function pointers. I define a function bar that return that takes an integer and returns an integer, and the function uh, calculates the integer that you give it plus three, and then the function foo accepts an integer, returns an integer. But it takes the, fun the integer that you would give it, and it subtracts the value of bar of x from that and returns the result. So, and here's the main uh, point of the whole exercise here, is that this is how you declare a pointer to a function. So instead of just saying int star z, which would be a pointer to an integer, if you put the parentheses around the uh, variable declared in this way, it creates a function pointer that points to a function that accepts an integer and returns an integer. So that's the idea. So I can assign z to bar. Bar is a function that accepts an integer, returns an integer. And then I can call z, which now points to bar, with a value of 2. And what do you expect it would return? Think about that. Then if I assign z to foo and I call z of 2, it's the same. it looks the same, z of 2, but now z has been assigned to a different function, so it calls a different function. It's going to call foo. So let's look at that. It'll be 5. That's 2 plus 3. And then it'll be negative 3. Well, wait a minute. Negative 3. That's 2 minus bar of 3, but bar of 3 was 5, so 2 minus 5 indeed is negative 3. So that's how function pointers work. Um, the thing is, there's another example of function pointers that you're going to use in Project 1, and that's called quicksort. So I'm going to go ahead and pop over to quicksort here. There's a man page for it. Quicksort is a function that takes a pointer to void. That means it's a pointer to anything. It takes an integer, which is the number of elements in the array. The idea is that the base is a pointer to the beginning of an array. And that array has so many elements in it, say, you know, 15 or 20 or 100 or 1,000. I don't know how big the array is. And size is the number of bytes in one element of the array. So quicksort just gets the rough outline of what's... It doesn't know anything about what's in the array. It doesn't know what the things are, but it knows how big they are and how many of them there are. And that's it. And then you pass in a function pointer. You pass in a function pointer that takes a pointer to any two elements of that array, and they're constant void stars. So that means that um, quicksort doesn't know what the things are pointing to. They're just void pointers that point to something. But you pass in a function that knows about the elements of the array, and that can calculate whether they're... Uh, 
different or one is greater than the other. So let's see how that works. The, the comparison function has to return zero if they're equal to each other. It has to return a positive number if the one on the left is greater than the one on the right. It has to return a negative number if the one on the right is greater than the one on the left. And that's, uh, and that's the requirement of the thing. Let's go see how that works. Okay, so let's, let's see how this is going to work. First of all, um, I want to get rid of all this good stuff. We'll start fresh. Um, because I'm using QSort, let's see, if I go back, QSort relies on standard lib, right? So, oopsie, let's see. Standard lib right here. There you go. Um, and it requires a comparison function that accepts two const void stars. So let's, let's start with that. Include standard lib.h. And I'm also going to be comparing strings, so I'm going to include string.h. I'm going to say uh, it's an integer function, my compare, and it takes a const void star a and const void star b. Now these are pointers to elements of my array. Now the elements of my array are car stars, so that means these are car star stars. So uh, let's, first of all, let me make some local, just to make it clear, you don't have to do it this way, you can do it all with inline casting, but let me just make it clear. Uh, let's make a car star star uh, a pointer, and we'll just cast a to that, and we'll make it car star star b pointer, and I'm going to cast b to that. I'm just changing these guys from void stars to car star stars. I know they're really car star stars because that's what they are in my application, but um, the problem is the comparison function you pass to QSort has to be declared to match what QSort expects, and it, it expects a function that wants uh, void stars. So anyway, let's, uh, let's do that. And then all I want to do is compare the two strings pointed to by, um, by these guys, A and B. So let me just say return. Uh, str cmp a pointer b pointer okay and that will then compare those two strings uh, I need to make an actual array so let's say car star uh, my array equals and we'll put in hello there uh, swim 230. How about that? And just for fun, let's say uh, I'm going to call QSort and I'm going to pass in, uh, actually let's look, QSort takes the array, the number of members, the size of a single element, and the comparison function. So first I want the array, my array, the number of members, that's three, the size of a single member, so that's the size of a car star, because this is an array of car stars. And then the comparison function, my compare. Now I don't put the parentheses on my compare because I want a function pointer, right? So now what I want to do is to just iterate. Let's go ahead and uh, get a nice iteration variable here, i equals zero i is less than 3, i plus plus, and we'll just say printf item percent d, whoops, is percent s. Okay. Oh, and I got to pass in i and my array sub i. How about that? I think that should do it. So we've got a comparison function that compares 
A pointer and B pointer, which are the car star stars. They get passed in by Q sort. I've got the array, the length of the array, the size of an element in the array, and the comparison function. Now this could be an array of anything. It could be an array of structures, an array of integers, an array of whatever. Um, as long as the comparison function accepts pointers to those things, and it can compare two things, it doesn't matter. The Q sort will take care of it. By the way, there's also a merge sort and a heap sort. There's other sorts that are already cooked up and ready to go, and they use function pointers to handle the comparison of arbitrary contents or elements of the array. So let's give it a try. Oh, okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, I see the trouble. Uh, a pointer is a car star star. It should be star a pointer. Yep. Silly me. There you go. Hello, Swen230 there. So uh, that is actually correctly sorted. Now the thing I want to point out is uh, I could reverse the sort by simply returning the negative of string compare. And that should sort in the opposite order. There, Swen230, hello. So the point is the comparison function I put in is in charge of telling QSort how to actually sort the array. Uh, and the key is to, uh, you just need to come up with a way of returning a number, positive one if A is greater than B, zero if they're equal, and negative, well, negative anything, anything less than zero if A is less than B. So that's the way it works. I hope that helps.